Hey, Addy. Yeah. What do you call a campfire at a nudist colony? What? A weenie roast. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go through, you know, just some things that, you know, people don't tell you about living in Portland here. So stay tuned and let's kind of dive into a few of these. I'm about to do it. All right, everybody, thank you again so much for tuning in. I'm Lucas Holt, your local realtor for Southwest Washington, as well as the greater Portland area. And we got Addie Net over here. Back at it again. And beep, 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 Thank you all for tuning in. If this is your first time to the channel, hit like, hit subscribe, hit that bell button, be notified every time we put out a new video. Yes. And again, do not hesitate. Give us a call, text, email, anytime, 24 seven. Put us to work for you guys. We don't bite. So yeah, anytime, shoot us a text and let's have that conversation for you. So we're gonna go through a few different things that, you know, in my opinion, people don't tell you about living in Portland. Mm -hmm. I was a transplant myself. I've been here for quite a few years now, but I'll say these things kind of came top of mind. Me and my wife were actually going through this list, kind of compiling it. I'm um, interested to so hear what you're going to say. So just like some stuff that very odd is like moving here. It was kind of backwards from what we thought it was going to be um, in really? good ways and or bad ways for you. So let's go on to my number one thing. Um, I think this is huge is it's not nearly as weird as what people think it is. It's as weird as you want to make it. It is. That's a good way to put it right there. It really is as weird as you want to make it. <laughs> I think it's kind of follows that age old adage of like, you'll find what you're looking for at Absolutely. the end of the day. So if you're one of those people that, you know, you want to find a super eclectic scene, you want to, you know, find the Portlandia feeling yeah. then there are those spots for you guys <laughs> out so in true. the trendy areas like hawthorne alberta arts all that kind of stuff there are those areas for you where you can really dive into that culture but if you're somebody I, that i would say is more like myself I, i'm speaking for you but like addy where you find yourself kind of more so in the middle ground there you like to go and maybe to bars some restaurants you're not going out to like going to clubs and you're not you know going crazy then i think portland has a lot of really great options around town for you knob hill for you a lot of the bars and restaurants in those cool trendy areas like hawthorne i think it's just not as eclectic as what people think i thought when i moved here i thought like if i went to a restaurant that you know hey they would have to tell me where the cow came from that the beef was butchered at and oh everything and that's just not the case it's just it's, it's much more that. normal than what i thought it was going to be yeah absolutely uh, just to expand on that like one example is the nightlife scene like you could have just a normal wine and dine experience go home and mm -hmm. you know boom yeah, I went to Ruth Chris. I did that. Right. Happy birthday, hon. And you're done. Or you could go out and you might find a group of friends that are into some weird things. <laughs> like I remember going to like a birthday party and we were at some bar that was like goth themed and there was glow stuff and Draculas and sculptures. And right. you're like, what is this? Yeah. But you would never know unless like you were out well, and with I a think group that's the that. beauty of the Portland area though, right, is right. that it does like it gets this wrap around the nation of totally. being like, oh, Oh, you're going to be around with the crazies out there. But it's like, no, like you have to go out, in my opinion, kind of actively search that out. Totally. And once you find it, you definitely can find it. But if that's just not something you're into, I don't think you have to worry about it. So like for you people out there, like when I was moving here, I had taken one trip to Portland before mm. I bought my house. The second trip I was in Portland, I was literally moving into my house. And that was one thing that everybody asking me, or like, aren't you worried about how weird it is over there? Like all these weird people. And I was like, yeah, I, I was genuinely nervous about that. But as I lived here, I was like, dude, this is just the same as any other big city. Well, and let's not, to. let's not forget the city's not that big and it's nope. 10 minutes to the suburbs where we're back to edge suburbs. Yep, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so let's go on to my next thing. Addie's gonna love this for yeah. you. Addie, I've got his soapbox he's gonna stand on in a second does it deal with um, four wheels it has to do with four <laughs> wheels and i'll tell you right now traffic isn't good here guys it's really not um 
it's it, I should I should say from a standpoint of me living in California, you'll hear me say a lot of the time, you know, traffic isn't that bad, which in that standpoint, when I compare it to Southern California, it really isn't that bad, guys. But with that being said, I can see why people say it is terrible traffic here. The highways, in my opinion, are getting more and more backed up. If you are finding yourself needing to commute along that five freeway, going any amount near downtown, it's gonna be backed up around there, guys. Right. And then if you're talking about the 26 from downtown, it's going to get backed up for you. If you're anywhere around downtown, it's going to get backed up. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of one thing, I, I take it with a grain of salt, because in my opinion, if you're in a big city, if you're around downtown, mm -hmm. it's gonna get backed up. I don't see as much traffic problems once you start getting out to the suburbs and all that kind of deal. So right. that's why I kind of say traffic isn't as bad as what some people think, but it's not the best around here either. Yeah, I think it really does come down to those primary commuting hours. So like your, your 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and mm -hmm. then the afternoon really starts getting locked up around 3.45, Yeah. right? Yep. Maybe a little sooner. Um, if you can navigate not having to do those hours, it's huge. I mean, there's a lot of people have different work flexibilities nowadays on when they can come in. Yeah. Like we have our we work uh, from home, all that kind of stuff. Totally, yeah. go in once a week and come in whenever you want. So if you can play that game, you can. Um, but yeah, it does jam up. It can get mm -hmm. pretty bad. I mean, it's Bridge City, yep. guys. Like <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you have bridges. Guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so totally. Kind of to piggyback off of that, why is traffic getting so bad? It's because of the, honestly the influx people, of people that yeah. are coming into town here. Um, people keep on saying, you know, hey, Portland's a shrinking city. Yes, Portland proper is actually declining slightly on the population but our suburbs are getting bigger. And so what all of you trolls that I see you on my comments over there, trolls? I think we just had one this past oh, week really? comment about how we freaking hate Californians, stay away. Oh really? Dude, that's not the case. I mean, yeah. these trolls online and everything, they have loud barks over here, but I haven't met a native Portland person that isn't a keyboard warrior <laughs> that actually hates Californians. No. So that's, I, I feel like that's kind of a stigma around the city is like people hate Californians. No, yeah. come here. Your money works here too. Yeah, no, I totally, I completely agree with you. Um, I think that's false for sure. Uh, <laughs> I would like to say back to the traffic thing, watch that traffic video that you and I did. Cause that kind of brings in some nice context. Yeah. Secondly, the speed limits here are a little bit lower. It's 55. Those are speed advisements. Yeah. 50, 55 <laughs> versus up in Washington, you're hitting 65. Yep. I know there's other places in the country that are even higher. Um, so it's a little bit slower. The bridge work is way behind, especially that cross from Washington mm -hmm. to Portland. Mm -hmm. That's an ongoing. We could do a whole video about the Oregon versus Washington and Vancouver versus Portland. And they can never come up with a resolution. Yeah. So that just it's a that's a tough one mm -hmm. to get through. So onto the next thing that people don't tell you about this area. In, in my this this was a huge thing when I moved here mm -hmm. was the east side of downtown versus downtown okay. in my opinion and what i'm getting at when i say that is the totally different vibes and feelings that you get from one end to the other so in the other big cities that i've been to and lived in in the past such as you know grand rapids michigan such as san diego i've lived in la for you so a lot of those southern cities my brother lives in boston i've been there a lot visiting him i used to my other brother used to live in chicago i used to visit there all the time and when when i lived or visited those areas it was always a feeling of kind of your port your your downtown sprawling metro area always had kind of one vibe to it mm -hmm. it was that vibe of the city and in my opinion that couldn't be more different here in portland you have your downtown portland which are your high rises your your uh, west side of the willamette river there for you and that is a totally different culture than your east side of the willamette where your mm -hmm. trendy streets are your hawthorns alberta arts mississippi all that kind of stuff you're getting a lot more arts kind of focused on that east side. You're getting more of your Portlandia feeling 
on that east side. Yeah. Downtown Portland is another downtown. I don't think that there's much that really distinguishes it from any other big city in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, there are some cool little areas within it, but I just, I don't think it's much different than anywhere else. The east side is really where I think Portland gets the personality from. Yeah, it's a little more cultured. Uh, it's got that Portlandia vibe with mm -hmm. like the charming homes yep. with the wraparound porch, maybe painted an odd color to stand out. Right. And then you're right. I totally agree with you. The the west side of downtown, you got the business district, which is really not a lot going on mm -hmm. um, from a day to day. But then the Pearl Slap Town, it's a little more modernized. Yep. Maybe more people wearing Lululemon rather than a Carhartt over there. <laughs> Uh, Knob Hill, it's got a little bit of both, um, yeah. but there's really not that many housing opportunities like that from a yeah. per unit available. That's yeah. not a lot. Exactly. So, and then let's expand that out just a little bit more and okay. say Portland proper versus the suburbs. And this again was a huge shock to me when I moved here really? was Portland proper is so much different in just culture than what the rest of the suburbs are. So I kind of omit Gresham from this conversation. Okay. When we're going to be talking about like even your Oregon City, West Lynn, I mean, Tiger, take, then take in any other, uh, pretty much any okay. other suburb other than kind of Gresham and Portland proper. Got it. I think it's just, it, it really is such a feeling of you're in the suburbs when you get out there. And it's a lot different of feeling in my, so like, again, in Southern California, where I came from is you have San Diego and then you have maybe your Mission Viejo, La Jolla, your Encinitas, and it's kind of like a continuation of the city. It is so separate here. Once you move out from downtown, it is like you're in a whole nother area of the country, in my opinion. So again, those people that when I was moving here saying, oh my God, you're gonna be dealing with so much bull crap around Portland, all these weird people, the politics, all that kind of stuff. As soon as you get out of Portland proper, I'd even say Multnomah County, yeah. It is a whole different ball game. And you're working with political views that are much more aligned in the middle. You're working with people in general that just kind of personality wise align much more in the middle. And it's it's kind of a breath of fresh air. Just I, I feel like it's more able to get along with everybody within the suburbs and every not saying you can't get along with everybody within Portland proper. I think it is one of the nicest cities I've ever been to. Um, but it's just a totally different feeling once you get out to the burbs. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think, you know, to summarize what you said, all the suburbs, even when even when you're talking, um, you know, Hillsboro, Beaverton, Tiger, Twalton, Wilsonville, Westland. Clackamas, Oregon City, mm -hmm. Happy Valley, that entire yep. horseshoe, it all revolves around the school. Yep. Every single thing revolves around the school district. The design of mm -hmm. the, uh, what do you call it? The neighborhoods. Cul-de-sacs, grocery <laughs> store, elementary school, middle school, high school. Like yep. everything revolves around the school. Without a doubt, without a doubt. So finally, I'll get on to our last point here. And I, I think Addy is going to disagree with me being a native Portland person. Um, and I know that he's a little bit of a snowbird himself where he flies around and enjoys warm, sunny weather when I don't. But in either case, I think that the weather isn't nearly as bad as what people say. Um, I just, I don't think it's the case. I think we get a lot more sun than what people say. And to be frank, yeah. we don't get as much rain as what you would think either. Um, now we're filming this in end of September. So it's raining today. So it is raining today. And maybe if you ask me the same thing, am I putting this on the list in five months? Lord knows. But I just don't think it's as bad as what people think. I think the summers are absolutely stunning out here. I mean, this summer, what we averaged mid 80s probably for our temperature and really sunny. I mean, it would hardly saw any rain this summer. Now, come the winter time, yeah, you're going to be gray and overcast for quite a bit of it. You are going to have some days of sun sprinkled in there, but you're also going to see some sprinkling of rain. It's never, very hardly ever is it a downpour of rain in this area. 
it's more so a sprinkle where you're still able to go out and enjoy the outdoors. And I think that's the huge barrier to get over here is what's your tolerance for rain? Are you willing to go out when it is sprinkling or are you permitting down when it's just a little sprinkle out? I, t I mean, that's the big thing is like your mental health and attitude toward mm -hmm. it. If you're embracing it and hiking even though it might not be a perfect weather mm -hmm. you're golfing you're doing whatever activity physical and embracing it gets you through it but yeah i think it's real the seasonal stuff is super cool it's beautiful in the fall here but the weather does change and uh i think that thanksgiving all the way to like may is is yeah. the tough one for me it is gray like oh yeah, yeah. it's gray and it, yeah. for me personally if i'm not active and doing stuff outside of the house during that period you can feel a less excited mood i'm not trying to go off on a tedx speech here but it's true and you need to have a good attitude mm -hmm. about it i think i know how to get you active this summer i'm just gonna hold a topo chico heart seltzer <laughs> out my car window and have you chase after me so i have no problem with the summer <laughs> It's no, but this year I'm gonna try to embrace more golf, even if it's gloomy. Out. There we go. That's so what I'm doing. Those are our things that I don't think that people tell you about living in Portland. So again, hit that like, hit subscribe, hit, hit that bell button, and don't hesitate. Give us a call, text, email anytime, 24/7, and put us to work for you. Thank you all. Have a great one.